Today we're going to be talking about creating the film look for your photos on the iPhone. We're first going to start in just the iPhone Photos app itself, and I'm going to be editing this photo of a little geological arch here in Utah, and we're going to be trying to get that just that faded film look. The film look can mean a lot of things to different people because during the time of film cameras, there were lots of different film stocks, and each film stock would produce its own look with its own colors and grain. And so we're just going to try and duplicate just a very basic film look here, and it's really difficult to do that in the native Photos app for iPhone, but I'm going to show you the best that we can do with it, and then right after that, we'll go ahead and we will use another application to see if we can get a better film look out of a non-native application. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. On this photo, I'm just going to hit edit in the upper right hand corner. Before we start the film look, we want to go ahead and just do the corrections to the photo that it needs. So I have a whole course on how to do adjustments and edit your photos in the Photos app. So I'll link to that in the video below, but I'm just going to do this part real quick here. So I always start by hitting auto just to see if it does what I like. Tap the photo to show the original and the new one. I don't love what it did there. It's really brighter than I want it to be. So we're going to go ahead and go to Brilliance. Raise up our Brilliance slider just a little bit. I'm going to drop the highlights because some parts of this photo are just too bright. Go ahead and add some contrast. See what happens when we add a little vibrance. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and do some of the film look to it. And the key to the film look really is getting your blacks to be more faded. And so we're going to go to the black point, and if we drag this to the right, things will get blacker. But if we drag it to the left, things will get less black. And that gives us a little bit of the faded look. But we don't have very fine-tuned controls inside the Photos app. So there isn't too much that we can do there. Something else to help us with the faded look is here in the vignette. You can give your dark corners to your vignette. But I found if you give little light corners to your vignette, that can make it look a little bit more faded. Then we have to go ahead and adjust for that black point being raised. And just lower our brightness a little bit. And it's all about the balance here. So as we lower that black point, you can see we're getting some more fading. So that's what it looked like before, and that's what it looks like now. We'll try seeing what happens if we mess with our saturation a little bit. Give it a little bit less saturation. Okay. And then warmth and tint are always good because film stocks tended to have kind of a specific color cast to them. To the left on tint is green, to the right is magenta. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of magenta. Then over on warmth, I'll give it a little bit of yellow. So then if I tap on that, you can see the original. You can see what we have now. It's definitely looking more like that faded film look that we had before. I'm just going to go try a little bit more with the black point here. No, I think that was good. Okay, so the keys really to trying to duplicate that faded film look are to mess with the black point and try and bring those blacks up into the gray area to give it that fade, using the vignette to give that little white edge to the corners, and then using your warmth and your tint to give kind of a cast to your photo. One thing you can't do is add noise. You can reduce noise, but you can't add noise. So there's not really a way in this native app to get the grain that we're looking for. Okay, so I think that's as much as we can do here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done on that. I'll save the photo. Then I have a copy of the photo here at the end, which I'm going to open up in Snapseed. And we're going to try and get our faded film look there. All right, so now we're in Snapseed, and we're going to open up the original picture. I made a duplicate of it before I made the edits in the Photos app. So now I have the original picture here in Snapseed. And Snapseed is a really powerful photo editor. It's actually a company inside of Google that creates it now. So it's a really good editor. It has a lot of tools, and it is free. So anyone can use this to create really good-looking photos. There are some other apps that are really great for editing photos, but they're not free. So we'll stick with this one for now. And we can really get a good film look here. So let's go ahead and I'm not worried about looks. If you want to just use somebody else's, that would be fine. But right here, we're going to try and create our own. So we go to tools. And the first thing we're going to do, just like before, is fix the look of the image. So we go to tune image and we can hit the auto. The square in the top right will let us see before and after. Not a whole lot going on there. We've already edited this image, so we know that we want to drop the brightness a little on it. Give it a little bit more contrast. A 
we're just trying to correct the photo so that it looks right before we start giving it the look. Let's highlight down a little bit. Okay, that's looking better. And so we'll hit the check mark and that will apply those edits. We'll open up our other tools and we're going to go into curves. Curves is really the key to creating a distinct look with photography. And you can see there are some looks that are already there that you can choose. I'm going to go ahead and just turn that off by hitting the little tags in the bottom right. And we're going to start working with just the curve ourselves. The thing to understand about curves, is if you see this circle on the left, if we hit that, we can see the channels. There's one channel for everything. Then there's a red channel, a green channel, a blue channel, and a luminance channel. We're going to start in the RGB channel, which is everything together. And then we'll work on colors inside of the red, green, and blue channels. Okay, so we know that we need to get those blacks to be gray. And the good thing about the curves is we can control specific regions. So the histogram along the bottom shows us where things are at, and it's running from darks all the way down to very brights. And so this point on the very left is actually the darkest darks, those shadows. And if we drag it up, you can see everything's becoming more and more faded. But we don't want everything in the photo to be faded. We just want those really dark points. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to place a point just by tapping right in the middle. And we're going to raise up our left point. And we're going to bring down our middle point a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to grab the point exactly. And you'll see when you tap on the photo, it'll try and show you the original versus the changes that you've made. Okay, so you can already see that's starting to look a lot different and a lot better. And if we don't wanna see the curve grid, we can actually just tap on the eyeball and the curve grid will disappear so we can see the whole photo. And let's go ahead, turning that back on, we'll go into the red channel and we wanna add kind of our look here. So now we have just the red channel running from the darks on the left to the highlights on the right hand side. I'm going to add a point in the middle I'm just going to drag that point up. Now the thing to remember about these channels is that they control the color that they say, in this case the red, and its inverse, which in this case is cyan. So if I drag it down, it will actually add in cyan. So I think I'm going to leave that there. and I'm actually going to try and add some red into the darks by dragging this up and seeing what happens there. Little red tinge in the darks there. Go ahead and add in a little cyan by dragging that down just a little bit from the middle. Let's go to green. And if we drag down, we'll add in some magenta. Look, if we drag up, it will add in green. I don't think we need really anything there though, so I'll leave that basically the same. Let's go to blue. If we drag down, we'll actually add in yellow here. If we drag up, We'll add in blue. So you can see how different this is really looking from the photo that we had before. We need much more of a distinct style. And you can control very specific regions with this curve. By adding points at any point along the curve, then you can control just that area. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit the check mark on our curve, and we'll add that adjustment. So we can see by holding down, we can see the before and the after. That's looking pretty good. The next thing that we want to do is go ahead and add some grain. So we'll go to tools and there is a grain option here. So we're just going to choose grainy film. And there's some different presets here to add grain. And you can try out different ones for different looks. But the important thing to know is that if you scroll up and down on the screen, you can change between adjusting how much grain there is and how much the strength this particular style has. So we can just bring that style strength all the way down and then let's go ahead and see what it looks like without grain and then add grain in. Sometimes you can see this better when you zoom in. Zoom in on the sky here. Let's see, no grain, grain. So you can see it's adding some of that texture in there. So you can use a specific style if you want, but I'm more interested in just adding some grain here and then hitting the check mark. And so you can see, if we hold down again, this is what we started with, and this is what we're ending with. This is a much more stylized, much more kind of retro film stock looking photo. And then of course we can export this, and I'm going to export it as save changes so that we can look at both of them in the Photos app again. 
say modify. Okay, now if we go back to the Photos app, you can see this is the one we edited with the iPhone. So it's okay, um, but this is the one that we edited with Snapseed, and that has a much more of that stylized look that we were going for when we were trying to get that faded film stock look. You can achieve lots of different looks with your iPhone doing different things depending on which apps you use. The stock app for editing photos is really great. It has a lot of great features in it, but you can definitely achieve more as you use different apps. So I will link to my course on the basics of iPhone photo editing and other courses that I have for working on the iPhone in the link below. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about creative work on iPhone and iPad. All right, catch you later. Bye.